today we are going to talk about some rendering issues right <coughs> so so far we have uh, looked at the possibility of rendering objects right more like a line drawing or piecewise line drawing right so in order to be able to have realism in the rendering or the display of the objects or the scene we construct it is important that we try to incorporate the issues which will enhance the realism or the realistic display right so if you look at uh, the kind of possible rendering one may have or what we have seen earlier is a sort of a wireframe rendering right where we see the display of let's say a cube as a collection of drawing lines right and uh, so this is a very simple way of displaying or drawing the objects and we have noticed that it may lead to an ambiguity in understanding what that object is about if we just try to fill the various primitives or the polygons which constitute the object right so if i have a cuboid kind of a structure here and if i try to just fill this polygons or the faces of the cube with a color right just a color so as a consequence i may get just a flat color rendering of the object right which does not give me any information about the three dimensionality of the object right i am not able to appreciate the 3d aspects of the object it's just a blob of color right so in order to enhance that what we need to do is we need to look at the issues which relate to the interaction of the light source let's say if i assume some light which is illuminating the object that's what happens in the reality right so how does an object or the surface which i want to render interacts with that light source or light sources if there are more than one right and that what results into to have a different shade or color for different points in the object right and that's what gives you the 3d notion or the display of the object fine so we are going to look at some uh, mos possible models which are helpful for deciding the illumination of an object right so uh, the ideas are borrowed from the kind of physics you have studied earlier but they are going to be simplistic so that you can compute them in compute them fast right and still be able to get something reasonable right that is what the intention is okay so now when we are talking about the interaction of a of the light or light sources with respect to the objects of the scene then from uh, the physics what we have studied we observe that light when reaches on a surface it gets absorbed it gets reflected or it may get transmitted right so the, there are various phenomena and these are lots of let's say the major things which happen to the light now uh, let's say we ignore for the time being the transmitted part okay. so what we see is that the amount which is reflected actually determines the color or the brightness of the intensity on the object right so so in a way what we are dealing with here with is the light material so there is also now a notion of the material properties of the object 
So, there is a geometrical representation of the object and you also need to incorporate some material properties right and the interaction of that would in turn give you the information about the total amount of reflection on the surface right and which will give you the color or the intensity you want to determine right. So, so while uh, looking at let us say the various components for deciding illumination on a point of the surface, what we uh, observe looking at the reflection of the light on a surface that there are various uh, components in which we can look at the reflection of light right. So, there is a there is an ambient light which comes from all directions right and is scattered in all directions right. So, there is a sort of a a glow in the environment right which is basically contributed from various distributed sources of light right. So, even if let us say in a daytime you switch off the light or whatever sources of you light uh, of light you have in the room you still have some illumination or glow in the environment and that is what we refer to as this ambient component right. Then there is also a diffuse light which comes from one direction right and is scattered in all directions. And there is also a specular light which comes from one direction and is scattered in some preferred direction. Okay, so, we are going to look at so these components and look at the computational aspect of these components and then define an illumination model. Okay. So, let us see let us talk about diffuse reflection first. So, we will talk about ambient maybe at the last right. So, diffuse reflection is something like you have uh, light coming from one direction right. This L is the light vector, N is the normal vector at a point of the surface right and uh, <coughs> the the angle between the light vector and the normal vector is let us say theta right. So, observing Lambert's law which says that the reflected light is proportional to the cosine of the angle between the light vector and the normal vector and so all of you have studied that. So, which basically means that I can define the diffuse reflection component given let us say the incident light is I L and I define a, a coefficient called diffuse reflection coefficient which actually is based on the properties of the material of the surface which I am going to render. Right. So, so typically if I am looking at let us say rendering in a in a single uh, color mode that means let us say gray levels one intensity value then this k d would vary between 0 and 1 right. So, 0 means very low in intensity right. So, color of the inherent object is towards the black right and as I go to 1 then I have the color as more towards white right. Similarly, if I am looking or I am talking in terms of a colored object this could define the color of the object which I am interested in displaying right. So, this could have components like R G B right. So, 
if I say 1 0 0 that is a vector R G B which would mean that the object which I am interested in is red. Right. So, this K D captures the material property or the color properties of the surface. Right. Now, this cos theta is nothing but L dot n. Right. Considering the unit vectors, cos theta is just the dot product. So, so using Lambert's law, I can basically model the diffuse reflection, which says that there is a light incident on the surface and there is a uniform sort of a distributed scattering of the light determined by this. Okay, so, here is a sort of an example here let us say these are the light rays I am getting right. These are the incident light rays and then the outgoing light rays are going to be these blue things right. So, they are all uniform at this point right. Okay. So, uh, another sort of an example now what do we observe basically the interaction of the light source with the surface or the object gets determined by the angle between the light vector and the normal vector. So, that is the governing parameter which, which decides everything plus of course, the color properties of the object defined by K D. Right, so here, here is an example. If you have the the light incident on the point of a surface coincident with the normal vector, so you will have something like this. Right, on a sphere, so you will observe the distribution of the intensity over a sphere is something like this. Right, so it's at this point this is uniformly distributed right. The moment I change the angle or let us say if I make the light vector slightly away from the normal vector right. So, it will change the, the diffuse reflection for, for the sphere at various points right and so on. Right. So, here I, I observe that the total illumination is reduced. So, all I am saying is at this point what happens all you see that the total diffuse reflection is reduced which is just a direct function of the angle right and that is what will happen if you see the points which are towards the boundary or the farther from the center of the sphere right. So, you will see a variation of a shade onto the sphere. Just by using diffuse reflection, you can actually look at the shading of the sphere, right, which already increases the realism of the object, right. Okay. So, so, what are we saying? We are saying that this diffuse reflection is actually only depends on the light vector and it is independent of the wear. It does not matter where the viewer is, right. All it is concerned about the light vector, right. So, it is viewer independent. Now, at times what happens is when we are talking about the illumination of a point on the surface and uh, we sort of observe that in reality also that the points or the objects which are farther from the light source should have less let us say reflection or the light glow onto the object right. So, there are let us say two spheres one sphere here another sphere here right. 
So, you may want that this sphere which is farther from the light source gets less number of or lets less uh, light incident on it right. Therefore, the total reflection is reduced. So, you may want to incorporate some notion of the proximity of the objects with respect to the light sources right. So, which can be done or modeled using an inverse function to the distance right. So, here if I consider q to be the distance of the point or the object from the light source, then I use this inverse function a plus b q plus c q square, which in some sense attenuates the light intensity as a function of distance. Right? So, some people use such a function, some people do not use, so it is debatable. Then uh, the angle uh, at which light will fall would also depend upon the distance. So, would not that be incorporated in that? No, no. You see, the the direction of the light source is already captured yes, so through the. the distance will also be incorporated in the angle. No, not really. See. Uh, so because at a larger distance, intensity falling on the object will decrease. So. Uh, it will have a different effect just well right right so so that's what we want to capture we don't want to capture uh, so the direction or let's say the direction of the light source with respect to the normal right that is not capturing how far is the light source right so uh, in case you are interested in incorporating that aspect and clearly uh, we observe that there is an inverse relationship to the to the light incident with respect to the distance right so we may want to model something like this that is the idea but many people don't incorporate this just a you know, preference right because the, there, is a, there is an implicit role of viewer also, which we are discarding, right. So, anyway, so this is just to, to tell you that if you want to incorporate the distance from the light source, you can do this fashion, right. Okay. So, now the question is that this diffuse reflection does not incorporate many other aspects, which we may be still interested in. So, for instance, often we observe there are high highlights or shininess on an object, right. So, perhaps you might be noticing some glare or shininess on my glasses just because the kind of material it is made of, right. So, here is an example for instance, there is this you know concentration of light at some points portion of the object that is what I mean by shininess or highlights, which are completely ignored by diffuse reflection. And these highlights or shininess in fact, in some sense a consequence of incorporating a viewing direction right. So, whenever you see some shininess as a viewer if you change you see that shininess also is changing right. So, specular reflection which is sort of an information about highlights or shininess considers viewing direction. So, this is something which is viewing dependent right. So, now the question is how would we like to model this. So, so there is a, a Fong model which is used for modeling specular reflection. What it says is that now what do we have if we consider a light 
incident on some point here this is the normal vector and this v is the viewing vector right that is the direction of the viewer right so now what happens is that uh, there is a reflection of the light at this point right this r is nothing but a reflected vector right and uh, from your physics if you know that there is also a mirror effect right so that is what in some sense we are trying to capture right so if i have the the v coincident to r i will observe that the entire light is reflected right so whatever is an image here of the light source i will see here right that's what is completely reflected right so let's say without worrying about this mirror effect at this point of time we just want to see that there is a light incident on it right which is reflected through the vector r right and that is also contributing to the total reflection of the light at this point in addition to the diffuse reflection right and this is actually proportional to the cosine of the angle between the viewing vector and the reflected vector right is actually an exponent used here i'll just explain you why and what is the role of this exponent right so so this causes the specular reflection or models this specular reflection okay now in other words what we are saying is that there is this light incident here and there is this reflected vector right what happens is that there is some sort of a distribution of the reflection about this reflected vector which is also determined by the direction of the viewer right so there is some concentration of reflection here but it spreads over right and the concentration of that spread is captured through the exponent which we have used for cos alpha right so if i use that exponent equals to 1 i have this cos alpha function plotted here and if i use higher exponent 5 10 or so you see that the curve changes in this way and i see more of a concentrated intensity at that point right so it basically controls the spread right so and which actually is a some sort of a measure of the type of material i am having for the surface so if i have a large n then these are more like metallic objects right so the shininess is very very concentrated right and if the n is small then it is more of a matte object something like a paper or wood where you do not observe lots of shininess right sir for an ideal mirror n should be infinity for which for yeah ideal mirror for ideal mirror uh yeah so basically you are saying that if it just there is no spread right it is just a single point 
right. So, uh, actually there are there are other issues also let us maybe why, why when I talk when I will talk about ray tracing then we will actually see how do we model things like mirror ok. Because uh, uh, right now what we are looking at is that I am I am looking at what is the influence of the intensity of the light onto the intensity which I need to render this point right. So, uh, if I am just looking at single point reflection right then of course, this will be a very large number like an infinity there is no spread basically. See this is a sort of a uh, plot of the cos alpha. So, if I have a cos alpha versus alpha. See it is just a plot of cos alpha, how do you plot cos alpha? Right. So, this is a cos alpha. Right. No, this is this is just controlling the spread. Okay, this is just controlling the spread and normalized, right? So all I'm saying is that what happens to this this term? Right? Then of course there is also how much do I get? That is a different thing. Is it clear? So, this is just like how would this vary with respect to this n right in a normalized fashion. So, I am just still keeping this as unity or whatever right this this part. So, when I increase the value of n I see that this there is a concentration around this spread is reducing. Right. Let me give you an example here. Right. So, there is an example. So, here let us say if I had some other direction, I get the shininess. Now, I for these three I have the same direction and just to show you the variation of the value of n. Right. So, here you see it is spotted here. So, it is a, it's a high value of n. Here you see more spread, it is a lower value of n much lower here right. So, this is the concentration of the light which is due to the exponent value right. So, you have uh, rest of the diffuse reflection coming right this is an added value to it which gives you concentration of intensity and thereby some shininess or highlight ok. So, now we come back to the ambient reflection right. In fact, what happens is that whenever we talk about uh, rendering or display and when we are looking at the light sources which could be defined for the for illuminating the environment. See in reality there are lots of light sources which are there and may not be explicitly defined as light sources right because even objects themselves work as light sources they have the ability to emit light right and so on. So, there is a lot of in integration of various light sources in the environment which in turn give you some glow of the environment even without having an explicit light source 
right. So, this is what we try to capture through ambient reflection. Now, clearly if I try to model each object as a potential light source and therefore, compute the light distribution for all the other objects is going to be computationally very intensive. Right? So, what we do is we approximate this phenomena, we try to approximate this phenomena just using a simple relation like this, right, where uh, you have uh, an ambient reflection coefficient similar to K D and K S right, and ambient incident light. So, here we can differentiate from the incident light which we are talking about with respect to a light source. Right. This is general ambient light which I could define differently from the other incident lights. Right. So, now we have looked at diffuse reflection, specular reflection and ambient reflection. Okay. So, if, if I just combine them, I get an illumination model which is due to Fong illumination model, where I get the total intensity just as a summation of ambient reflection, diffuse reflection, specular reflection. Right. So, I just substitute the various terms here. Right. So, here this K s is similar to K d characteristic to the material, but see most of the time when we look at the shininess they are of the color of the light. So, typically we are talking about white light sources then the shininess which you observe is white. Right. So, this K s is generally taken as like a white color right, or just a scalar value unless you are trying to do a color light source that is also possible. Right. So, now uh, so, this is what we get if I had only one light source, right. So, there is an ambient light coming from the environment and I have one light source from which I get the incident light as I L, right. Now, let us say if I have more than one light sources, then what, what do I, sh what should I do? All I need to do is just look at the interaction with all the light sources, right? Compute the respective terms for diffuse reflection and specular reflection with respect to each light source. So, this is what I am doing here. Just taking a sum over light sources I have, let us say 1 to m, and computing the individual terms for diffuse and specular reflection, right? So, I can actually handle multiple light sources. I A is generally uh, given to you or you assume right similar to like you will define some I L what is the incident light. Similarly, you would assume some ambient light. And in fact, K A is also often taken as some toned value of K D. Right? So, you do not want to change the color of the object. Right? Okay. So, now what are the computational issues here? I need to have this L dot n, which is easy. I know where the light sources I would define it for the environment of the scene, 
I know the n or I can compute the normal vector right and I also require this reflected vector v is easy to compute right the viewer direction is easy to compute I know where the viewer is located then the question comes how do I compute this r right. So, let us let us try to see some of the computational aspects. Now, now just to sort of sum up the uh, Fong illumination model if we look at it is a local illumination model because the computation which we are doing is local at that point right. And if you look at the the basic inputs are the light or the light sources number of light sources I have and the material properties given through the various reflection coefficients right. The viewing vector right and the surface. Now, the question is I need to compute this R. right now how do we get it so this is the configuration we are looking at there is this light vector here normal vector and this is the reflected vector right so you can also solve it geometrically to find out what r should be in terms of l and n but geometrically it is straightforward right geometrically what is happening is if i consider this where i have this minus l vector right so and this is nothing but <coughs> twice of this right which is a vector l dot n n l dot n is the amount in the direction of n it is a projection of this onto this right. So, so this total vector is now 2 times L dot n n right therefore, r is nothing but this twice L dot n n minus L right. So, I can compute the reflected vector r in terms of l and n and those are given to me therefore, I can compute r dot v fine. Now, there is a an approximation also through what is called as half wave vector. So, half wave vector is actually a half wave vector between V and L, V and L. Okay. So, there in fact, what is said here that uh, you compute R dot V by computing H dot N. h dot n. So, this angle is somewhat similar to this angle that is what the, the idea there. So, again computing h is easy you just need to have v and l right n also you know. So, you can approximate r dot v using h dot n. fine ok. So, now the other thing is that we also need to have normal vector right and during the course we have looked at the computation of normal vector for various primitives right. So, just to review some of it if I have a plane given in this form A x plus B y plus C z plus D equals to 0 or I could also have a plane defined in terms of the normal vector 
n dot p minus p naught equals to 0. So, p is an arbitrary point on the plane, p naught is a known point in the plane, right. So, just looking at the solution of this gives me a normal vector as nothing but a b c, right, which I can normalize. So, I know how to compute the normal vector of plane, it is very straightforward. In fact, there is an alternate way by taking a cross product, right. So, typically you would have the, the extents given through the vertices of the plane and you can take the dot product of the or cross product of the sides to have the normal vector, right. Similarly, if you are interested in getting normal vector for something like a sphere, if you use an implicit equation of this kind f x y z equals to x square plus y square plus z square minus 1 equals to 0, then all you need take a take a grad function of f and that defines the norm right in fact in in this case you can also look at the the vector form which will be let's say if i define p as a point on the on the surface of the sphere so p dot p minus 1 equals to 0 right and the solution of that gives me normal as just p right okay and we have also seen normal vector for parametric surfaces right so where if i take the derivative at a point of the surface and take a cross product of that, I can get the normal of that point, right. So, we have all the necessary information which we require to compute the elimination and right, the various components of the elimination, right. Now, uh, let us try to also see we have looked at light sources, but actually you can have various kinds of light sources, right. So, you may have a light source defined as a point light source, where the light source is given by a point, right, the position of a point and we consider that the light is emitted in all directions. right so something like this or you may also have a light source which is a direction light source which is given by a vector right so the light is incident in along a direction so therefore the as far as the location of the source is concerned it is at where is the light source infinity. You can also have spot light so probably you notice that in uh, uh, cinematography or in many other situations right or you want to also simulate something like a torch right. So, you have a spotlight source also which is given by a cone kind of a structure. So, all cone is saying is that there is some sort of a zone within which you are going to emit the light source from the point. Right. So, uh, all these light sources are supported in OpenGL. Okay. 
So, you just have to give the type of the light source you want to use and the rest of it will be done by the op open gear. Right. Now, what I am going to do now is uh, show you a small clip which will probably inspire you for the role of this illumination model and the light lighting for rendering of synthetic environment. Right. So, even just incorporating information about light can actually add a lot in terms of realism. Okay. So, let me just So, this in fact is a is a short uh, movie made by Pixar. Pixar is a uh, animated movie house. They have won lots of academic and Oscar awards. Okay. So, this was made in I think 1986. So, fairly old. Okay. called Luxo Junior. So, you see this spotlight moving around. Java. Okay, so that basically tells you just a small feature of lights and shades can do nice things right. So, next time we will continue on uh, shading, but for polygonal meshes. So, because as we have talked about that polygon shading is supported in the hardware. Right. So, what is it which is involved in shading the polygons? Okay. So, that is what we are going to look at next time. Okay. Thank you.